Okay, so we have been looking at Laplace transforms. We have first of all looked at what the definition is, then we also uh, studied some of its properties and how these properties can be used to evaluate, you know, Laplace transforms of, uh, you know, fairly complicated functions using some of these principles. So in this lecture, we will look at some special class of functions, right, which are uh, you know, whose Laplace transforms we will work out and we will see how, you know, knowing this, it will allow us to evaluate Laplace transforms of other, you know, more complicated or, you know, composite functions which make use of, uh, you know, the properties of these special kinds of functions, right? you know, that is the subject matter for this lecture. Okay, so we start with something called the Heaviside step function, right? It's a very useful function. It appears in physics, it appears in you know, various applications in engineering, electrical engineers use this all the time. And so we imagine a scenario where, you know, something is turned on at a certain point, right? So up till a certain time, uh, the signal is absent. And at that particular time, there's a, it's like a switch, right? You turn it on, right? It's, from, it's like an off on button and so in the context of Laplace transforms we are looking at functions who, which are you know defined only for positive times. So you, you imagine that this type of a switch is turned on at some time which is uh, you know represented by this parameter a and so we take a to be a positive value. Now at, at, at this moment a you imagine that this, this function will will be 1 beyond that point and it is 0 up to that point. It is a discontinuous function but it is very useful as you will see and it is also possible to find its Laplace transform. So let us work out the Laplace transform of this uh, Heaviside step function. It is simply given by you know 0 to infinity this theta function e to the minus st. So when you have an integral of you know some discontinuous function so we you know go from uh, 0 to that particular point where the discontinuity is and then again integrate from a to infinity and in this case 0 to a it is just, just 0 because you have you know the value of the function is 0 in this interval and then from a to infinity it is just 1 so you get integral a to infinity e to the minus st which is easy enough to integrate and so you just have e to the minus st divided by minus s from 0 to infinity so we end up with the result that the Laplace transform of this Heaviside step function is simply e to the minus a s divided by s, right. So we can quickly check that if uh, if you put a equal to, well I mean it is understood that s is greater than 0, right. So we have seen that uh, you know it is explicitly uh, you know it is worth write, writing down explicitly that s is taken to be greater than 0 otherwise you will not have this integral will not be a convergent integral. Okay, so it is good to put it down explicitly. Now let us check that when you take a to 0, right. So then the function itself is, it is like saying that your function is 1 for t greater than 0 and anyway you do not care about what happens for t less than 0. So for all practical purposes you can just say that the function is 1. So we know that the, the Laplace transform of the function f of t equal to 1 is simply 1 over s, right and that is what this reduces to in any case. If you put a equal to 0, you get 1 over s, so which is which is nice because you have, we recover a result which we have already seen. So now let us uh, look at a few examples. So let us look at one example where this is made use of directly. So suppose we, so the point is that this Heaviside step function appears in, you know, many contexts and sometimes it appears in a more complicated form. So we have worked out the bare form. Right, so you can multiply it by some factor, you can add, you know, and so on. Like, let us look at this example. So you have f of t is 0 from 0 to 2 and then it becomes 2 from 2 to 4 and stays at 2 from 2 to 4 and then it is 3 from 4 to 6 and then it drops back to 0 beyond t equals 6, right. So a function like this, you can imagine, it has actually more than one step, right. The magnitude of the jump is also something that you can play with, you know, and then you can have a, a switch in the positive direction, negative direction and so on, right. So you can have, 
you know, fairly complicated step function one can imagine. So the key point is that you can rewrite this type of function in terms of, you know, uh, multiple such Heaviside step functions. So first of all, we note that from 0 to it is just 0. So all the action happens at t equal to 2 and the size of the jump is 2. So we write it down as 2 times theta 2 of t plus then the next, you know, inst uh, instant where something happens is at t equal to 4. And so then we see that the size of the jump there is 1, right? It goes from 2 to 3. So we just put theta 4 of t. Right? So if you are in doubt, you can check what happens, you know, at a time slightly greater than 4. So then you see that this is going to give us 1 and this is going to give us 2. So it's going to be 3. And that's what the value should be between 4 and 6. And beyond uh, time t greater than 6, for t time greater than 6, we want it to go back to 0. So this 2 plus 3 will of course act, 2 plus 1 will give you 3 and so you must subtract 3 so that you can bring it back to 0, right. So for t less than 6 of course this does not operate so it does not matter and for t greater than 0 this minus 3 theta 6 of t will ensure that it is going to go to 0. So this is a very compact nice way of expressing the same function and now we use the linearity of the Laplace transform and the fact that we already know the Laplace transforms of each of these functions we have worked it out above and using that we have the Laplace transform of this function is just 2 times e to the minus 2s divided by s plus e times minus 4s divided by s minus 3 times e to the minus 6s over s which can be written simply as 2 e to the minus 2s plus e to the minus 4s minus 3 times e to the minus 6s the whole thing divided by s. So that is our answer for this problem. You can cook up your own you know, functions involving many such steps, write, write it in terms of these, you know, many heavy side step functions appropriately and then work out the Laplace transform, right. So this is a game you can play. So now let us look at the second type of, you know, scenario which is useful and where we'll, we can work out the Laplace transform. Suppose we are given that the Laplace transform of some function f of t is f of s and we are interested in you know, finding the Laplace transform of a translation of this function. So your f of t is given, but you want to just shift this f of t to some, you know, future value of time. So in other words, you are considering a function g of t, which, you know, which is going to stay, which is just set to be 0 from 0 to a. a is of course a positive uh, quantity. And then the function, entire function, whatever information was in f of t is still retained, but it is shifted by this amount. It goes to f of t minus a. So if you have a scenario like this, then we can find its Laplace transform and to do this we use this trick that in fact g of t can be written in this, you know, compact form as this theta a of t times f of t minus a because we have just seen that theta is anyway going to be 0 all the way from 0 to a. So it is anyway going to give you the same function. And once we have this, so to find the Laplace transform, we have to, we invoke the definition 0 to infinity theta uh, a of t times f of t minus a times e to the minus st dt and then theta a anyway is 0 from 0 to a. So it becomes just a to infinity f of t minus a times e to the minus st dt. And now we do a change of variable. So it is convenient to define t minus a as tau. So thus we have the Laplace transform of g of t is, is equal to integral 0 to infinity f of tau e to the minus s times tau plus a, the whole thing multiplied by d tau. So we pull out this e to the minus a s and then now it is this integral 0 to infinity f of tau e to the minus s tau d tau. But immediately we recognize this as the Laplace transform of the function f itself. So we get e to the minus a s times the Laplace transform of the function itself. So the Laplace transform of the translated function is simply given by e to the minus a s times the Laplace transform of the function itself, right. So basically the information contained in f of t is still there and in addition we also have this, you know, stuff which comes from this shift or the tra translation is just this factor e to the minus a s, right. It gets tagged along in the Laplace transform. So immediately we see that this is like a sanity check we can do is if you put f of t to be just 1. We already know that its Laplace, Laplace transform is 1 over s. So uh, we recover the earlier result that you know if you put f of t is 1, so you just get Laplace transform of theta of a 
is e to the minus a s times Laplace transform of 1 which is just 1 over s. So, we get Laplace transform of theta a of t is equal to e to the minus a s over s which is a result which we already obtained. Right? So, it is a sanity check. So, indeed it all is it is all consistent. So, let us look at an example where this property is exploited. So, suppose we have a function like this g of t is 0 from 0 to pi by 2 and it is sine of t for t greater than pi by 2. So, now we make this observation that in fact sine of t is the same of as cosine of pi by 2 minus t but cosine of plus theta and cosine of minus theta are the same. So, in fact it is more convenient to write it here as cosine of t minus pi by 2. So, now we, we immediately see that when you put it in this form, so in fact it is a translated function right, it is 0 from 0 to uh, pi by 2 but then you have this you know this form of t minus pi by 2 is also exactly you know it matches with this a. So, it is exactly in this form, it is f of t minus a for t greater than a and a is of course pi by 2. So, it is Laplace transform is something that we can immediately write down right using uh, the property that we already have. So, f of s is Laplace transform of theta pi by 2 of t times cosine of t minus pi by 2 which is the same as e to the minus a s. So, in this case it is e to the minus pi by 2 times s times the Laplace transform of uh, of this function itself right it is f of t. So, which in this case is s over s squared plus 1 right cosine of t. Um, so, we just have this factor e to the minus pi s by 2 times s over s squared plus 1. So, it is as simple as that we have to be careful that you have the correct function here it should be f of t minus a for t greater than a ok. So, let us look at the third type of function which we want to discuss in this lecture which is suppose you have a function f of t and which is periodic with period t and we want to find its Laplace transform. So, we have f of s is you know by definition it is from 0 to infinity f of t times e to the minus s t dt, but this time interval from 0 to infinity can itself be divided into you know intervals of length t. So, 0 to t, t to t to 2t, 3 2t to 3t so on in general n t to n plus 1 t and then we introduce the substitution. So, we look at you know the generic integral involved here. So, it is an infinite sum, it is an infinite series of you know summing over many of these integrals, but the point is that all these integrals are connected right. So, in order to see that let us look at just one typical integral n t to n plus 1 t f of t to the minus s t dt. So, if we make the substitution you know if you introduce a change of variable t is equal to tau plus n t, then we see that tau will go from 0 to t. So, in place of f of t we write f of tau plus n t and then in place of e to the minus s t we write e to the minus s times tau plus n t and we have uh, d t. In fact, it is d tau right d t and d tau are the same. So, it is more correct to write it as d tau. So, let us let us correct this. So, we have d tau and once again here also we have the tau ok. So, in fact, so the in, uh, so we notice that first of all f of tau plus n t is the same as f of tau. So, it and this factor e to the minus s n t can be pulled out and then we are just left with this integral integral 0 to t f of tau e to the minus s tau d tau, but which is nothing but the Laplace transform of this function itself. So, we have uh, f of s is uh, Laplace transform of uh, ok. So, this this integral 0 to t is is not quite the Laplace transform it is just a it is just a common integral that you get for every one of these terms. So, we will pull out this common integral. So, the, uh, the Laplace transform is this integral from 0 to infinity f of t e to the minus s t dt, but then we we have you know these various factors that we can tag along to each of these, but all of them have the same factor which is this integral 0 to t f of t e to the minus s t dt. So, it is like doing a Laplace transform, but within just one period right. So, the integral is carried out in just one period and then you have this infinite series which is something which we can sum. It is a familiar series and each of these factors are you know less than 1. So, you can it is a convergent series and then we will get 
a closed form expression for this f of s is nothing but 1 over 1 minus e to the minus ts times this integral 0 to t within just one period f of t e to the minus st dt. So thus we have this very useful result. So the Laplace transform of this periodic function with period t is simply given by 1 over 1 minus e to the minus t s times integral 0 to t f of t to the minus s t dt. So let us quickly look at one example where this can be applied. So suppose we have a square wave function. So we have seen how to integrate uh, how to take the Laplace transform of the cosine function of the sine function. But suppose we look at the square wave right it starts at t equal to 0 and it remains 0 from 0 to 1 and then it becomes 1 between 1 and 2 and then again it comes back to 0 and then it goes back to 1 and so on. It is periodic with period t equal to 2. So using the property above we have the Laplace transform of this function is just simply 1 over 1 minus e to the minus 2s times integral 0 to t f of t e to the minus s t dt. But f of t is non-zero only in the interval 1 to 2. So this integral from 0 to, to 2 is reduced to an integral from 1 to 2 and uh, which we can go ahead and evaluate. So we have 1 over 1 minus e to the minus 2s times you know this stuff e to the minus st divided by minus s evaluated between 1 and 2. So plugging in for t equal to 2 and t equal to 1 here and subtracting we have e to the minus s minus e to the minus 2s divided by s times 1 minus e to the minus 2s right so which is the the laplace transform of the square wave right so you you can compare this with the laplace transform of the of the sinusoidal periodic function in fact you can try to use this method to compute the laplace transform of the sine function or the cosine function but in the end the labor involved will not be significantly reduced if you use this technique because you still have to do this integral involving you know, cosine of t times e to the minus st or sine of t times e to the minus st and so probably some kind of integration of parts will anyway have to be carried out. But here you see that for the square wave you have this you know nice simplification and then you have this final answer. Okay, so that is all for this lecture. Thank you.